In this video, we are going to introduce the idea of trigonometric substitution. This material, speaking bluntly, has a bad reputation. Many students think it's difficult to understand and difficult to use. Some professors also feel that way, again speaking frankly, but this is a part of the standard curriculum. If some of you are going to go on to take Calculus 3, you need to at least to see this material. And what I'm going to do in this video is provide motivation. I'm not going to state any of the three trigonometric substitutions yet. I'm just going to ask the question, where does this idea of taking x and replacing it with some trigonometric trick expression come from. And the short version is that it comes from the Pythagorean theorem and right triangle trigonometry. The long answer is about to be given via an example. Now, you hopefully recognize this integral as an integral you could take, get rid of that second dx, as an integral you could take using the inverse trig function. So doing this problem doesn't require trigonometric substitution. Nevertheless, we'll use this as our example to try to see where the ideas of this method come from. In particular, trigonometric substitution comes, at least in part, from the observation that this square root is something you might expect to see if you were using the Pythagorean theorem on a right triangle. If you have a right triangle and you label your sides A, C, and B, then the Pythagorean theorem says that B is the square root of c squared minus a squared. And this looks a lot like what we have here. We have the square root of a three squared minus x squared. So we could draw a right triangle where this square root appears. If x is one of the legs, and three is the hypotenuse. This other leg 
is this square root. And now, this square root is complicated. X and 3 are simple. If you decide you're only going to look at the simple parts of this triangle, you are left with only these two sides. What could you say about these sides? And here's where we make the intuitive leap of introducing an angle. If you're trying to relate two sides of a triangle and you've already used the Pythagorean theorem, what's left is right triangle trigonometry. The sine of theta is x divided by 3. So x equals 3 times the sine of theta. And then we have another brain wave. What if we took the x that appears in this integral and we replaced it with this? Is there any chance that that could give us something nice? Well, if we want to use 3 times the sine of theta here, everything has to be in terms of theta, including this dx. dx is 3 times the cosine of theta d theta. Ergo, 3 times the cosine of theta d theta divided by the square root of 9 minus x squared, 9 times the sine squared of theta. And it's hard to believe that the integral you get when you replace your nice, simple, variable x with some kind of trigonometric function will ever be nicer than the original integral. This is like anti-u substitution. When you have u substitution, you take something complicated, like the cosine of x, and you replace it with something simple, u. Here, we're going in exactly the opposite direction. We're taking something simple, x, and we're replacing it with a more complicated function. Nevertheless, I am here to tell you that this does sometimes work. In particular, 
we can simplify this square root significantly. If you have not memorized the Pythagorean identity, you need to. This is just one of the fundamental pieces of knowledge that any math major should have. And we can rewrite it as the cosine squared of theta is one minus the sine squared of theta. What's our motivation for doing that? Well, eagle-eyed viewers may already have spotted it. We have a nine here and a nine here. So if we pull that nine out, we are left with this. And in the numerator, we still have this. This nine comes out of the square root. The square root of nine is a three. So our constants cancel. That doesn't really matter, though. I mean, constants we can just pull entirely out of square roots. What is more significant is that we have this square root of the cosine squared in the denominator. Now, properly speaking, the square root of the cosine squared is the absolute value of the cosine. We'll briefly discuss that in a later video. For now, we simply won't to worry about it. We will write to this as the cosine of theta and get the integral of one d theta, which is theta plus c. Now, theta is a dummy variable. We certainly don't want that to be our solution. Going back here, if we take the arc sign of both sides of this, we get theta is the arc sine of x divided by 3. So we'll take that down here to get as our solution the arc sine of x divided by 3 plus a constant of integration. 
And this loosely is how trigonometric substitution works. We see something, in this case a square root, that makes us think of right triangles. We draw a right triangle. We use it to define a new variable theta. We use right triangle trigonometry to relate theta to our original variable. We solve for our original variable, in this case x, we find its differential, and then we take these and we plug them back into the original integral. Hopefully, the integral we get from this will simplify. In particular, all of the trigonometric substitutions are designed so that the Pythagorean identity can be used as a simplification tool. You get an integral in terms of theta. You take that integral and then you convert back into your original variable. That's the idea. And there are three standard trigonometric functions. So we saw one of them in this example using the sine of theta. In the next video, we'll talk more about this. What do you have to see in this integral for a substitution like this to be a good idea? And then in later videos, we'll discuss the other substitutions.